guys, I got some good news. I got my first ever meat welder. You know, I probably don't even know what most of this stuff is, but uh, we'll figure that bit out somehow. So we got a hose thingy, some earth clamp thingy, some stick thingy. Sunglasses, five million. Yeah. And let's not forget about this thingy. Paper, what's here? Some flux core wire. No idea. Some replaceable stuff and uh, I guess this is uh, for the dig, dig welding thingy. Oh, and let's not forget the most important thingy. So, guys, this company, Vevor, contacted me and they offered to send me a MIG welder. Initially, I was looking to get a MIG welder from uh, this company, but the model I chose was about 1200 bucks. So I believe that one was a bit out of my league. This one though is retailing for about 350. I've actually used the Worth welder at work, so I know exactly how that operates. So it would be interesting to compare the two. Maybe there is not much difference. I mean, this thing also has a dig option, so that's pretty impressive actually. Usually those are quite expensive. So in this video, we'll try to go through testing this one out, how it works. Hopefully we'll get to try every option. So we'll try the stick welder, the meek welder with the flux core, and also with some unshielded wire. In addition to that, the dig as well. I have never done dig welding, so this might be so let's just stop wasting time, get right to it. First thing we'll try will be the sticky, sticky boy, to hook that bit up. So the clamp should go on minus, and the sticky part will go on the plus part. Correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, for stick welding, these things can be changed around. I'm not really sure about that, but I think they will work even if you switch them around. So here's how I will perform the test. I will use these steel blades, two blades on each welding setting. So a stick, flux core, regular wire and dig. As I've never done dig before, I don't know if it's doable, but uh, we'll see. My plan is to weld T-shapes. Tack one side with the control, I mean this thing, uh, grab welder, 200 million and the other side I will weld with the Weber welder. So let's see how this thing goes. Keep in mind though, this video is not intended to be some sort of a guide how to weld. I wouldn't properly know how to do that sort of a video because everything I know about welding, either I picked it up from YouTube and after that, points of trial and error. So definitely don't take it as some kind of a guide how to weld. If you're looking for that type of content, then I would suggest to look up a channel called Mike Vestiva. I mean, that guy is pretty much a welding god. He knows everything about anything. On his channel, he has dedicated playlists for just how to start welding, how to use this welding tool, how to use that welding tool, what techniques to use when doing welding, etc, etc, etc. 
addition to that, he also has a lot of videos about all sorts of, well, well, welding type tools. So a uh, really great channel to check out if you're into that sort of stuff. Oh crap, this is not even mine. Nobody will ever find out. Control sucks. But it should be fine. Let's see what's what. Well, at least the fan started up. That's a good sign. So these two settings are for me. I'm not gonna touch those right now. But I'm gonna set it to one. 140 actually 125 so it should have the same setting as the control nuclear welder for stick welding that should do it just need these two lines to be hooked up to the machine and then you should have spark in theory To be honest, um, that is probably the nicest stick weld bead I've ever done in my entire life. What the crap? Are you kidding me? That actually looks pretty good. But I felt that the amps were a bit much. Now it usually says on the box what type of amps you need. So this electrode says um, 60 to 90 amps. If I set 60 to 90 amps on this piece of crap, uh, let's see what happens. Kind of curious. Okay, I've set it to 60 amps. 60 amps. That's hopeless. Okay, I'm gonna set it to 90 amps. Yeah, no go. Let's set it to 140. Okay, that felt a bit much, but at least it was doable. At least with 140, I get a decent weld that will actually hold something in place. Now let's try the Weber 60 and 90. Well, 60 is a no-go, definitely. Let's try 95. Well, 90 was a bit better. 60 though wouldn't go at all. So 60 amps is pretty similar to this one and 90 amps is slightly better on this one. Now let's do a little rust test. So let's see if we can weld on a bit of rust. Well, it's pretty good on rust. I feel it has a bit of tough time starting, but once it goes, the bead runs pretty seamlessly and without any major problems. 
that pretty much concludes the stick welding testing but there's still one more thing that I want to try so let's go with some uh, four millimeter rod these are rated for up to 180 amps see how they perform with this one That's how you make crap look good, guys. Actually, I think, um, considering the thickness of the rod, it performed pretty good. And on the stick setting, its maximum output is rated for 200 amps. I'm pretty much the same as the... Yeah. So, stick-wise, it pretty much outperformed this. And this was retailing for 311 euros, which is roughly 350 bucks back in the day. Same price for this one, but keep in mind that this is only stick and this also has the MIG and DIG options, which we will be testing out next. And firstly, we'll do the flux core, the wire which came with the machine. Now we install the wire thing. I don't know, there's not much useful information in there, so let's try to do all of this. Firstly, remove this bit here. Now, you should be able to install two sized, two different sized rollers. So, one should be like this, and another one should be like this. A quick note here would be that they have different size center holes. But regardless of that, you can still install both of them. Common logic would say that it should be feeding into the machine like this. No idea what that does. So that's what it does. I suppose this is like the tensioning system. How much tension there is on the... I don't know, I'm just gonna leave it on due for now. Should work, maybe. Now in order for the meek and work, I think the polarity wire needs to be connected to the plus side. This bit is pretty much like plug and play. Like you would plug in a PlayStation controller. Freaking grandma mode give me maximum speed. Maybe something to do with this bit. Point 0.8. Oh, I get it. So the wire is one millimeter, this is point 0.8. That's why it's not coming through. Simple as that. I mean, that should be pretty much the whole setup. Uh. Oh, I see what's going on. So the bottom roller 
The bottom roller I think has different size grooves and I'm guessing it's not set correctly right now. Yeah, the one on the bottom is a bit bigger. Most likely that's the problem. Oh yeah. To set the right tension, just uh, turn it out as much as you can until it starts to slip. Okay, so now it's slipping and then you need to turn it in, I think it was about one and a half turns. So, should work now. Okay guys, so I did a little mistake. Apparently the Polarty conversion cable needs to be connected to the negative board when you're using flux core. But if you're using regular wire, then the conversion cable goes to the positive board. I did a lot of trial and erroring here and uh, couldn't figure out why I was getting so much splatter. I mean, it even says it. Read the manual, guys. Now the thing seems to work fine. Yeah. Same deal. One side will be done with the uh, control. To get a splatter free weld, uh, you need to adjust these two settings. Uh, I don't really know what to put, so let's just try a bit. I think this is the best one I managed to come up with. Minimal splatter. Yeah guys, no splatter anymore. I think that concludes the flux core. It does generate a lot of dust though. I'm not sure if that's normal or not. But if you can get the amps and current correct, then you can do some pretty good welds with this. Anyway, next up, let's, uh, let's test out the normal wire. I think there's two types of cast you can use for welding. One is just a single cast, either argon or CO2. And another type is a mixture of the two. For my testing purposes, I got the mixing. Because you know what I say, two is always better than one. You also need a regulator. Hmm. Mating season. Mating was a success. I don't really know how to set this, but 
I'm just gonna follow whatever is on that. Okay, so I've set the gas flow to about uh, seven. By the way, that's seven liters per minute. Ideally, that should be fine for indoor use. If you're outside, then you might wanna increase that because the wind might blow your gas away. Well, Google says that anything between five and seven should be fine. But if you want, you can go higher. I, mean, I did a bit of testing here and seven seems about correct. There is uh, one thing interesting though. I mean, the book clearly says that for solid carbon steel wire, you hook up the polarity connector to the positive side. And for airless self-protective wire or flux, you switch it around. Well, I tried that, but it doesn't work. When I do it by the book, it doesn't weld at all. All the weld just flies off into the distance. So I set the polarity cable to the negative like it was on the flux cable and it works fine now. So this is a bit misleading. Yeah. Anyway, let's do this bit now. To be honest, I can't even be bothered to use the control anymore. I think this will be a lot more fun. You know what? I'm already loving this. Feels like you have amazing control over welding. Definitely not gonna go anywhere. I think the volts were a bit too high. 16 and 98. I mean, this world is as solid as you can get. I'm pretty sure it's not gonna go anywhere. Guys, I think I'm in love with this weather. Welding is so easy now. I mean, this is, this is great. Oh boy, I'm gonna have a lot of fun with this welder. So as you saw, setting up the MIG for the solid wire was pretty easy. Personally, I think gas welding is a lot better than flux welding. Or, or I just don't know how to flux weld properly. Okay, well, so far I'm really liking this machine, guys. And like I said, I've used the uh, Wurst welder at work and I can't really see any difference at all when welding. I don't see any difference. Other than the price tag, 350 bucks versus 1200. That's insane. And keep in mind, there is still one more setup we have not tested, which the worst welder does not have. And that would be the dig. Well, this is gonna be interesting because I have never done dig welding. I'm about 50% sure that I'm gonna fail somehow and about 96% sure that most likely I will never do dig. I have no idea how this works. Absolutely zero knowledge. Nope, 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 nope. Nope, 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 nope. This thing does not explain how to set up the dig. So let's YOLO it. Got this bit here, some knob thing. I guess we need some of this stuff. If it fits, it sits. Hmm. Let's put this bit back. This bit here, perhaps. Yeah. Yeah, what are these for though? Hmm. No idea. 
Spirit Attack. I gotta go watch some Mike Festivo videos. Okay, apparently you need some type of a uh, tungsten electro tip thingy that goes in here. I believe this thing is for the tungsten rod and it should be in here. And what I figured out now is that you need either pure argon, pure helium or argon and helium mix for TIG welding. Sadly, I did not get that gas. So I probably can't even test it out because the gas I have is CO2 and argon mix, which apparently corrodes the tungsten dip. Bugger. Bugger, bugger, bugger. Considering that I had to pay 200 bucks for this gas cylinder, I'm thinking I'm not gonna get a separate cylinder just to test out the TIG. Yeah, probably. Personally, I don't think I will use TIG that much. But if I need it one day, then at least I have the option open. Besides, TIG is not really meant to weld well, heavy duty steel. TIG is usually meant for welding pipes and stuff. Or if you don't want much sparks. Because TIG produces very, very minimal sparks. So welding in an area where things might catch on fire, TIG is the best option. Yeah, so let's uh, skip TIG for now. And let's see what's what. But anyway, guys, we pretty much went through everything what this thing is capable of doing. And I am actually pretty impressed. Considering this is my first MIG welder, I am pretty happy with this one. Hands down, my favorite is the MIG option. My second favorite is probably the flux core and the stick actually performed also pretty good. So what now? Can we wrap up this video? No. This is too short. We need to do something else. We need some additional content. So I was thinking it's probably a huge pain to carry this thing along with the tank on hand. So let's build some type of a wheelbarrow for it. Yeah, let's do that bit. So maybe you guys remember, but last year I got two of these cart things and I used one of them to build the lawnmower tractor, trailer, thingy. I figured I'm gonna take two, but uh, I didn't really have any plans for the second one at the time. But I'm really glad I did it. Right now I could use this to build the welding wheelbarrow. This would suit very well for that project. Just got to do some modifications to it. This wheel. Somebody has been drifting with it. Mm, this is fine though. I won't be needing this one. So let's swap this out. Probably service the bearings as well. I swear, guys, this was like designed for that. A bunch of grandmas used this trolley for over 50 years to move some veneer around. But its true purpose has always been to be a taxi for this welder. Yeah, that's plausible.
well, if stuff doesn't want to move, then grab a hammer. Now that's why I love MIG. Filling that gap with a stick is incredibly hard. Most likely you will just melt the gap even bigger. With the MIG though, you can nicely seal any gap you want. It's pretty much like a hot glue gun. Just a point and shoot. Another area that MIG is gonna be great is welding really thin steel. I'm almost certain if I try to weld this with a stick, I would probably have a bunch of holes here right now. You know what, to build this car thing, I'm gonna try to salvage every piece of steel from the leftover skeleton. Probably can use these as front legs. The handbar set up, like 34. 33. How about that? Perfect. Now, mind the gap. This actually looks pretty good. Wouldn't you agree? Or at least now it won't kill anyone. Free bearings. Perhaps I can use them on some pointless future project of mine. Really good way to keep your hands warm. Yeah, that feels something. Something amazing. Yeah, I could definitely go for some shopping right now and use this as my shopping cart. I think this can handle a couple of watermelons at least. Now, I would love if it was pretty straight, but it's leaning a bit. And I think if I put too much weight on the front, it can just uh, topple over like this. But I can't put a lot of weight in the back because it would just topple over that way then. I'm gonna add some um, shoes to give me some leverage against the toppling.
I could definitely see myself riding this thing down a hill from somewhere. It has to be a really steep hill though. I'm thinking uh, Mount Everest steepness. How about that guys? Got enough room for a second cylinder and also some room for a second welder or maybe plasma cutter. This card thing will work out pretty good I guess. I do however need to ensure that the cylinder doesn't fall off. So I'm gonna make a box for this one and also one there just in case if, if I get another gas cylinder one day. Actually I, I do have another gas cylinder but uh, this thing is not certified so I'm not sure if I can get it refilled also it says on the lead that it's for food use only and it's CO2 rated I'm sure it can handle argon as well but uh, I don't think gas companies are willing to fill this for me so just in case I'm gonna make the second box which will fit that cylinder One downside of winging everything is that during the work the mind comes up with better solutions and then you kind of have to backtrack a bit. It can be a bit annoying. Wanna know a little trick guys? If the blade on the big grinder gets a bit too small, you can actually put this blade on the little grinder. As long as the thing fits in the card. This is pretty much maximum. But whatever you do, don't ever try to fit a big wheel on a small grinder. The speed of a small grinder is usually faster than the big grinder has, but at the dip, the speed will remain roughly the same. Basically just um, make sure you have the guard on, and if the blade fits inside the guard, then it should be fine. <laughs> Maximum efficiency, because using these smaller blades, on a big grinder usually is not that great. You just wanna take the thing off and throw it away. But if you use it long enough in order to fit it on a small grinder, then it feels like you have a new blade. Now all we need is even a smaller grinder. Some type of grinder that you can operate with just two fingers. Billion dollar idea right there guys.
Probably my favorite pastime event is cutting dreads. As long as you don't break the thing in there, then everything is okay. You should never force this. These sticks, they will break incredibly easy. Ah oh, man, need more power. No problem, I got some power for you. Oh boy, look how this one bends. Ew. But, who cares? As long as it fits, it sits. Well, this bit took forever, but I think it was well worth it. At least I have some room for future upgrades. Yeah, I'm talking to you, Dick. It's a bit on the heavy side. Not super heavy, you can still one hand it. But there is always some room to improve. So let's do that bit. Let's do the room to improve bit. Gosh, I just love welding now. Welding with this thing is like my favorite pastime event now. I think I will even prefer it over making some threads. I mean, it's just so satisfying that you can just tack everything nicely in place. And in some cases the tacking is enough. You don't really need to go full structural welding mode. I mean something like this. Completely unnecessary. I could even go further and grind this down. Like so. Looks great, but if you ask me, complete waste of time. Those three points probably could have done the same job as this smoothness. Yeah. I absolutely love these trill bits. I don't know what brand they are. Or who made them. All I know is that... They pretty much last forever. I'm talking about this set. I think I bought them like three years ago. And so far I have not snapped a single one. Well, I did kind of break the number 5, but I was able to recover that one. I was so amazed how the high-speed steel performed. So I decided to get the cobalt through bits. And these are just other chunk. I think the first hole I tried to drill, the number 8.5 just snapped in half. This is not even part of this set. After which, I bought this set. These are like made out of paper. You can probably get one or two holes done with them. And they will either go dull or just decide to break in half. Completely worthless. But yeah, these bits, just regular high speed steel. You get what you pay for. Do not forget those words, guys. 
you spend 10 billion dollars buying our aircraft carrier you get an aircraft carrier and if you buy a cheap ass 70 dollar drill set then you get a bunch of worthless drill bits that just break for no reason Just a random piece of steel is perfect. I'm not making this stuff up guys. Kinda picked it up and it fits. What is going on? I don't know. Couple of more items. Let's not forget the final piece of the bustle. Yeah. Now we're in business, guys. My little Walmart cart is working out great. One thing that I could still add, that would be some paint. Luckily though, I got a great selection of paint. So we got some blue, more blue, more blue, some lighter blue, sky blue. Blue. I guess it's blue. Well, to be honest, these two will match nicely. Ta -da. So guys, I think this uh, welding trolley came out great. At least I'm pretty satisfied with it. And you could even nicely access the side panel. If you need to add some extra wire. And like I said, there is some room for future upgrades. Let's just put this... Hobo here. Just as a temporary placeholder. By the way, there are some additional properties that I built into this thing. Thinking about anti theft. So getting the welder out of here in this state is not doable. Because you can't turn it on the spot, it will hit the sides, also the top. And because everything from the front end is welded, will make the scumbags stink a bit. So they will probably be like thinking about taking the entire trolley, which is no easy task. This thing probably weighs about 100 kilos combined. The only way to properly remove the welder from this rig is to firstly remove the back end, then take this piece off, remove the cylinder, and finally you can wiggle the welder out of here from the back. Now this will take time. Time that the scumbag probably doesn't want to spend. But anyway guys, let's uh, try to wrap up this video and uh, let's talk a bit about the welder. The Weber MiG 250. You know, I didn't just uh, test it out. I did an entire project with it. And I got to say, like I've said a lot during this video, I am actually pretty impressed. For 350 bucks, it's a pretty good welder. I mean, it's a lot better than this thing. If you were to compare the two, I would say that's a V8 turbo and that's a skateboard with uh, three wheels. So I'm really happy that I got this one as my first MIG welder. I was actually thinking about buying a MIG welder this year, but to be honest, I think I'm gonna skip buying that now because this is all I need. This will do everything in the shop. Most likely I will just keep it in the shop and outside I will still use the stick welder. So in this video you saw how that thing operates and if you are interested about buying this thing then I will throw that link in the description. 
addition to that i'm also going to add the discount code so if you're going to buy this make sure you use that code but anyway guys you've all been saying it and all i have done is come up with excuses but finally i have a meek welder this is gonna be great i hope you enjoyed this video and as always thanks for watching Bro, I'm gonna get a lot of projects done with this thing. The amount of ideas floating in this head, I mean, your head would just pop. Thing is Unspons certified and I approve this message. Yeah.